Welcome to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Extra. I'm Joy Baird. Today we're in the garden and we're building a cold frame out of some lumber we had in the shed, but you could purchase the lumber from your local big box store or hardware store or our lumber yard. Now we're using 2x10s non-treated and they're kiln dry and these were in, a, in the shed from projects days gone by. Now they were in a design, they were put together for a desk type of project. So we disassembled them and you want to be sure of a couple of things. You want to make sure your ends are square. Now, if you buy these from your local home and garden center or a whole big box store, they'll typically cut these down to a size if you request it of whatever project you're working on. Now, even if you choose not to cut them down and you want to take them home and start fresh, you want to make sure the edges are square because not everything that comes from the mill is square. So you can use a square, you can use a ruler to try to eyeball and see if they're square or you can use a tape measure and measure the top side of the board and the bottom side of the board and to make sure that they fractionally they're as close to one another as possible and why is this important well it's because whenever you take your board and butt it up against the side of it here you want to make sure that it is as tight as possible because you don't want no cold air seeping into your cold frame or your hot box, whatever you want to call it, to uh, chill the plants that you're growing. Now, if, it, if there is gappage, you could potentially put silicone of some sort on the inside to seal all that up. So this is what it was. Now, uh, we're disassembling it for a couple of reasons because we're going to take this 2x10 end and match it with that box there, and I got a 2x6 here, and I got a 2x10 here. Well, we'll disassemble it, and we'll, we've got these brackets. So virtually none of this is any expense but the uh, six mil plastic that we're going to use. Now the top is going to be a screen from the house before the windows got replaced. Now this is a good size screen. We're going to make one of these boxes for the, bo the big garden here and we'll have a couple of other boxes for the small garden. Now as you can see this window frame or this screen is much larger than the box that we're going to make. So once we get the box constructed, we'll set this on top, figure out how much of a gap or how much board I have to cut out here. Then we'll bring the outside frame, screw it to, uh, to reattach it because we've got a good structure. So let's get going and putting our cold frame together. So I'm going to put the end pieces here together. I'm going to take your the short end and set it inside. Now, um, I'm going to use the brackets here on the inside as a little more structure, but also I'm going to put, oh, probably, I'm going to put two three inch screws on the outside, and based on how well that tightens it together, will determine whether or not I use the metal brackets that were on these uh, projects before. So, to do that, I'm going to lay my board here so I know. So I know how wide it needs to be, and I'm just going to take and mark, put an X there, and that way I know where I'm going to drill. I'm going to pre-drill these holes just to keep the wood, the chance of the wood splitting down to a minimum. So I'm going to start my screws before I put it vertical here, just so it's easier to put it all together. You want to do this on a as level surface as possible so you can get everything flush. So with using scrap lumber you have the uh, tendency of having pieces not always match up. So with the side that we've got attached here, it is one inch shorter than the piece that we're going to put on the other end. So I've marked my difference and we're going to cut it. Now this is where a square would come in real handy. I'm just going to use a makeshift straight edge and the saw that we found along the side of the road. Those always come in handy. And we're just going to cut this little portion off. Alright. Now let's see if it'll fit. I notice that this board here is very twisted. 
So we're just going to have to work with it the best we can. That'll fit there. So I'll get this side attached first. Then we'll work on the board that is twisted and try to get everything squared up. Now just remember, we're building a clove frame. We're not trying to build an addition onto the house. So if things are a little off, it's not that big of a deal. As long as you can get this as tight as possible. And then if we have to, we can fill in some of the cracks with silicone to keep the cold air out. So we've got our frame put together. We've got our window screen frame on top of it. And like I said, it's a little larger than what we're going to need. So we're going to cut it down. Now I know what you're thinking. Well, why don't you just make the box big enough for the frame? Well, we didn't have that amount of lumber. Now when we go to the small garden to make those, we'll buy fresh lumber and we'll be able to cut it to the shape of our screen. But since we don't have that size lumber, we're going to figure out where we need to be at, which is about the center of this board. Then I'm going to cut it down here, and I want to cut it here, and then I'm going to screw these two together, and the same thing up there. You'll understand when we get it all, all put together here. Now, the reason we're doing this is, one, because we want to have fresh produce throughout the winter. And a great reference that we have is Nikki Jabor's year -round, The Year-Round Vegetable Gardener. Now, she does gardening in the summer. She's from Nova Scotia, Canada, by the way, and she also does this cold frame growing in the winter. Now, if she can do it in Nova Scotia, I think we'll have no problem doing it here in southeast Wisconsin. Some of the things that we're going to be growing in our cold frames will be leafy greens, lettuce, spinach. We're going to try to grow carrots, beets, uh, some onions, and uh, experiment with some other cold hardy or hardy cold uh, plants like you would grow in early spring or late fall that can tolerate some of the colder temperatures. So that's the plan. We're going to see what we can do. It's going to be a whole lot of fun being able to harvest fresh produce in a cold climate during the winter without having an actual big size greenhouse. So let me get this cut down, marked and cut down, and we'll put it all together. There are many different styles of cold frames that you can construct for your own backyard. The flat top like we are creating we feel works best for us. You can also purchase cold frames online as well. You can construct your own as it has a slanting degree of top towards the south facing sun as well. Again this is all personal preference and what you feel will work best in your backyard. Alright so we got our window screen frame cut down obviously in a project like this is a lot of trial and error but we had to cut quite a considerable amount off to get it down to the size with the wood that we had available now we're going to put hinges on the back and a latch on the front this is going to be the front so i'm going to put hinges on the back now these hinges i don't know if we found them or they were already well i don't know where we got them from but they're going to work real well i'm going to put I think I might be able to get away with just one hinge because, you know, again, we're not building a house. We're just trying to build something that's going to grow food. So let me uh, get this put together, and then we're going to latch on the front as well. So I took the screens off because in the process of cutting it down, the screens uh, got mangled. So. We'll dispose of them in recycling form. Now when we do it with the other ones and be able to make it to the size of the screen frame, we won't have a problem. Now with the hinges, I'm going to put one on the center of the back. Now typically I'd want to do a hinge like that. But because the hinge is not big enough, it would only cover that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just render it a little bit. And all I'm wanting to do is have a hinge to where you can open the front up and then also close the front without the back sliding all over the place and also uh, attach it to, you know, so it's nice and firm. So we'll just screw them in and then we'll put the latch on the front. All right, we've got the back on there. we got one hinge, which is fine for what we're intending to do with it. I'm just putting this latch on the front and this is a good thing for if you have a lot of critters in, the, in your area. Now, I'm not saying raccoons are going to come up, stand on the back paws, open it up, and have a buffet. But it just keeps everything tight, closed, keeps it locked down for when it's windy, for when it's cold, and just to keep everything, the heat in the best possible. So I'm just going to put, I got the bracket there, I'm going to put this in. And then all the thing we have to do after this is we'll have to purchase some plastic, some clean, clear plastic, probably six mil plastic, and we'll drape over the top of it. And we might 
even put a piece underneath and we'll staple it down. And the reason why I'm thinking about doing two layers, one on top, one on bottom, is to have that air in between, that insulation, to keep it even warmer. Now another thing you want to keep in mind is on these really warm days prior to, you know, snow on the ground, you want to be able to open this up and allow that heat to come out because otherwise you're going to roast your plants. So we want to put some kind of uh, block here to where we can actually prop it open and we'll do that before we get done here. Alright, so the last thing we're going to do is put our block or our latch here so we can elevate the frame on the really warm days before it gets too cold. And I just took a piece of scrap lumber and cut it so whenever we can just open it up on the really warm days and let that air come out of there, that hot air with plastic over top of it on the, and at night we'll just close it back down and we'll be good to go. So it's just that easy, we'll get the plastic on there and come this fall we'll bring out in the garden when we get this thing set up. Now with this project it cost us zero dollars. Now that will be added, there will be a few dollars expense for the plastic that we'll use for to cover this but also that plastic will also be used for the other cold frames we'll make for the small garden. This was a little more labor, labor intensive than what I anticipated with having to cut down the screen frame. Obviously if we had the correct length of lumber it would have gone much quicker because we just matched up with the frame of the screen that we had here. But nevertheless it works well. It will produce food throughout the cold season and that really is the ultimate goal. A little extra work now for fresh vegetables. For more information please visit the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com